Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Germany in the Auto Resolve campaign. Before we actually get started with the episode, I have a few things, exciting things to talk about, to announce, just in case you're following along with this series live. And I don't suspect too many people are going to come back to Rule the Waves, especially especially like something as simple or not as, maybe, I, maybe not quite as interesting as a non-Auto Resolve. Yeah, but most people aren't going to want to come back to an Auto Resolve campaign. Anyway, uh, so probably this is for everyone watching this, basically. <laughs> this week, this is going to be a lot of Rule the Waves 2 type stuff. Now, we're starting off with uh, Rule the Waves tournament, a fleet design tournament. So if you haven't seen that, it's on the channel right now. Um, it's a fleet design tournament with uh, the winner gets, will win a free copy of Rule the Waves 2. So... Obviously, I'm very thankful to William at NWS for providing that. And if you're interested in possibly winning a copy of Rule of Waves 2, consider joining that tournament. Um, you can find an announcement of it on the channel. Otherwise, go over to the NWS forums and look at the Rule of Waves 2 forum, and you'll see a uh, Tortuga's fleet combat, fleet design tournament there. Other thing is... Rule of Waves 2 is coming out next week. The day that this is being recorded is Tuesday. This video will probably go out Wednesday. And a week from today, so next Tuesday, I will be streaming Rule of the Waves 2 in the afternoon my time. I'm going to shoot for like a 2 or 3 Pacific time stream, which should be uh, available, accessible for people in Europe. It'll be like 9 or 10. So that's my goal. And I plan to stream for three hours or so, just a whole bunch of ruled waves. That'll probably be actually a Japanese campaign while I start my recordings. Um, I'm going to start the recording series for Germany. So we'll probably have two series going in parallel. But why not? I mean, basically, clear my schedule. Rule of Waves 2 is all that Tortuga Power's YouTube channel will be about for at least a week and probably, you know, it could be much longer than that. I don't, I don't know how many other videos I'm going to get in. Okay, so all those announcements aside, how is everything going in this? First of all, I'm really happy with the Auto Resolve campaign. I feel comfortable enough with it that I am willing to do this tournament. Doing this tournament has actually brought a lot of edge cases to my attention, which was quite interesting. So there's a lot of changes I'm going to make, but I haven't quite made in... Uh, this will probably be the last recording I do until Saturday uh, when the tournament is. So if you haven't joined the tournament, you have until Friday night late, or if you're in Europe, even... Saturday morning to get your ship designs in and you'll you would email those to me but like I said check out the Louise forum for more details but okay let's get on with it sorry I spent what is that three minutes talking about all these announcements but a lot of exciting things basically so and then I should be emphasizing even more the fact that I will be streaming rule the waves 2 in less than a week it's amazing some enterprising young officers in naval intelligence have asked their plan to blow up well sure <clears throat> let's just do it and we'll see if it works or not, and whether we get caught, whatever. Managed to blow up, whatever. Unfortunately, Severs left tracks that led back. Ah, Prestige suffers. By all means. By two? Ah, that's fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just when I thought we'd be uh, free from war for a little bit. But we did want to go back to war with France. So it was an opportunity. Actually, this might even worked out better. Um, we don't want anybody on reserves anymore. Thankfully, I think, look, it, it's been, unfortunately, it's been a little while since the last video, but have we already did all, the, have we done all the upgrades we need to 1913? No. That's definitively a no. Yikes. So these guys are still on, oh, they have director though. What did we get that we would want to upgrade? Oh, mm, I'm not sure about that. Director, do we have advanced director or something? Oh, we do have improved director. Oh my gosh. There's so many ships that need to be upgraded. And we don't have the budget for it. I, I started off the episode by unpausing. I don't, I didn't show this on camera, but I meant to. I was on this screen when we started the recording to exactly mention that I'm unpausing the... I'm unhalting 
the construction on the Durflinger. <sighs> so we're probably going to go to war. We're not going to have a lot of ships ready for it, but okay, fair enough. This is just the way it goes. Wow. Okay. They must be in really bad shape. <laughs> mm, doubt this is going to go very well. And now we're back to the really tiny screen. I should have declined, huh? So, in the new one, I, um, I might... If you have any feedback, by the way, on the way things are presented, let me just show it once nice and... I mean, with only two ships, I feel like it it's pretty good. But when you get into huge fleets, seeing every what every ship does every single round, which is the log. I mean, basically, it's like the turn-by-turn -turn log that... Excuse me. Rule the Ways itself presents... Maybe it's too much. So they actually tried to flee. And they left. So that's it. The battle was over almost immediately. What was this at 30? Yeah. I was going to say, this must have been a very, very long range. Otherwise, mine might have gotten a chance. And that was another thing I already said, that people won't be able to retreat as easily in the newer update. Man, I forgot about that. I actually have to... <laughs> I was taking care of like some, some other details. And I forgot about that. <clears throat> Alright, so now I'm back down to this. And I, I just want to go to the Almanac real fast. Let's see what... What are the French up to? I know that it's not going to last very long, but let's just do this momentarily. <clears throat> I mean, most of the windows that pop up anyway are, you know... <laughs> basically, it doesn't really matter if the back screen is big or small, because we have a lot of windows we're going to pop up. So France has two dreadnoughts and three battle cruisers. Only two more dreadnoughts being built. What this tells me... Oh my gosh. They're really low on light cruisers. Yeah, they're just... They're a very, very defeated... Are they going for submarines? They're probably going to go for submarines. We will not want to fight the French after another couple of... Uh, after a few more years, because I'm sure that they're just going to go crazy on the uh, submarine side. Speaking of submarines, we did pretty well. And we sank a lot of theirs. And I forgot the British are our ally. <laughs> so this blockade, we can actually send our ships home. <laughs> All right, let's accept. They will decline. Let's accept. They decline. Accept. They decline. Wow, that's perfect. So will we, is it possible we could evade, invade? Yeah, I mean, this is obviously a very bad start for the French to begin with, but the only thing we could invade is a nom. Now, I thought that somebody was saying, is it the base capacity of a nom is higher than Cochin China? That's what it was. Okay, but base capacity for us is not a big deal, if I remember correctly. We're like, yeah. We're not even using... We're basically using a quarter of our allotment. And we have a few ships there, too. Fair number. So that's not a big deal. In fact, this many ships we may actually get. We may be able to pull off some kind of invasion. Which is, of course, why I was looking over here to begin with. But it does seem pretty viable. Now, do we want to pursue something in West Africa? Well, we need ships down there anyway. Although it is going to mean foreign tonnage is a bigger pain in the butt. All right, who's in Northern Europe? Only, uh, I, this is actually not that many ships. Should we get one of our battle cruisers to go down? Let's do it. Let's move at least one to West Africa. Feels like the right thing to do somehow. And then the other thing is, do we want to move somebody to the Indian Ocean? Maybe another battle cruiser to the Indian Ocean. It'll have to go through the Mediterranean, which is kind of fun on its own right. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, next turn. And the Elsass just, oh yes, was just released. Submarines are getting better. All right. Cruiser action. Hey, it finally happened. Is it a battle cruiser? No, it's not. Well, save, exit. 
simulate, check the results, nothing happened. It was only two destroyers on their part. My goodness, that's pretty minor. But hey, that's exactly what the simulator is for, as I have mentioned a thousand times. So by the way, um, news, uh, an update on the simulator's development as well. Now, at the simulator is going to come with the, the possibility to use uh, an options file. Now, if you don't specify things correctly in the options file, or you don't or you delete your options file, whatever, it will still generate, it'll still, um, it'll still basically load default options. So it's not a big deal. I'm learning how to do better coding, <laughs> proper form. I'm, you know, basically I'm exposed to some development where I work and I get to learn these little tricks. Superimposed turrets on destroyers, not super important to me. Just, oh, the Moltka, what class is she? The Molka class, obviously. <laughs> uh, I, I really want to take this one out for a spin. The test drive. So I really don't, I mean, let's just charge. Oh my God, this poor thing. That's probably more important than whatever this is. This one goes 27 knots. It's actually it's pretty good. All right, let's go chase this thing. Or maybe not. Hmm. Well, we did land a hit already. Ah, let's have some fun. Let's indulge ourselves this one battle. Is that the old uh, cruiser coming back? We can also launch a torpedo attack. By the way, I forgot. It's already too late. I need to switch off of captain's mode. <laughs> Crying out loud. So the two, uh, oh my god, this does not look good for the French. It has, it's already there. It's already going badly. And I don't think that they've, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes, please. Come this way. <laughs> Vittelsbach and Prusen, do your worst. All right, they've noticed. They're giving pursuit. My work here is done. This probably would have gone very, actually better for the French if they hadn't, if we hadn't fought because, I mean, if we had auto-simmed, I imagine for, but the, with the conservative results, you'd have to imagine that they would have done well. And that's probably the light cruiser again. So we can actually sandwich them in. And we're getting a lot of hits now. And this fax class, why not? Just take them all. One down. Ah, uh, we got her. This fax is doomed. Oh, look at that. Well, we're going to huddle close to our our dreadnoughts at this point. So we do not want anything to do with that. Oh, they're hit by a torpedo. <laughs> well, that's not too surprising. And the other one's definitely going down. A couple more torpedoes. Another torpedo. A few more coming. Unknown ship. Yeah, we, we know what's going on here, right? What's this Tourville all about? Ooh, 12, 14 inch guns. Very light armor though. 32,500. Now I would engage with the Moltka, but actually I think she's seriously spent on ammunition. Let's just take a look at that for ourselves. Yep, she is in very bad shape when it comes to ammunition. Better armor, 31,000. So really an even match, just using double guns instead of triple guns, which you know is kind of the German way. Not really sure what any of my, well, they're giving some, they're going for it. Those might not be my AI controlled ones. Those might be the AI's AI controlled ones. Anyways, even this one destroyer may make it out. So, <laughs> just 
We'll wait to the end of this result. Look at this destroyer still going. I'm just buddying up with my dreadnoughts here. You know, we'll go down to cruise. We'll we won't exhaust the, the poor guy's shoveling coal. Yeah, well, that was to be expected. That was to be expected as well. And we could just go back to port right here. Well, that was kind of fun. So we sank two dreadnoughts. And we lost one destroyer. Seems like pretty good result to me. And this is why I say often enough that, you know, it would have been really interesting actually to save and simulate and see what would have happened. Um, I could have taken a back a backup of the save game and everything. Because I think that I will get better results doing it myself, which is what I would expect that, you know, if you look, put the AI against the AI, it should be really more of an even match when you take the human's intelligence, creative thinking, etc. out of the picture. Well, the French are totally... I was going to say boned, yeah. But I guess they're totally boned now. <laughs> it's probably a more polite way of saying that. They are not in good shape. And I don't think that they should be accepting these. It's probably really good that they are not. And this does give us an opportunity. I mean, we're, we can use, first of all, this money to unpause, unhalt, resume construction on the various things that need to be resumed. And what else do we want to get done? So, 1916, these would be refit. Medusas are already... Are they improved? Oh, they... No, the cent we only have central firing for these, like, cruisers. What did we need? Well, I thought we were doing something with them, though. Quality negative one, that's terrible. <clears throat> wow, it's really bad. <laughs> These guys are director. The Verth class is using central firing, but uh, they're probably going to stay that way. Brandenburg has been upgraded to director. I think I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade my Vittelsbach. Get these guys to have improved director. It can be done. Do we want the just the 14 inch gun? I don't think so. Okay, who else? Let's just think about this for a little bit longer. You guys already have quality one. Wait. Oh, USA has quality one. Interesting. Well, this is particularly interesting because I can rebuild it in the United States, which is pretty crazy. And they do have improved director. Was I, am I, well, honestly, this is gonna take it to basically the perfect situation, like the perfect Oh, they don't have quality one six inch guns though. But this is gonna take this this uh, vessel to like the ideal. So I think I'm just gonna do this. Oh, wow, increased elevation, of course, why not? So these will be out for eight months. I don't suspect in that time that we're gonna have bad relations with the United States and that's the end game state for those ships. Oh, damage the Elsass. Huh, the new Elsass. Oh, get to fight a battle. Let's auto resolve. Intercepting ship, you retires from larger enemy. Okay. So, that was the the game simulator. Doesn't really give you a whole lot of information. I suspect that there's some that Frederick simulator, I should say, does not actually compute the battle the same way. It's probably just a, a random rolls. It probably just looks at, you know, does an immediate comparison of stats and immediately generates a result. Like a one-off solution. Whereas mine is actually a, a battle simulation, right? You see they close in range, they fight at different distances, they make decisions, which is much more complicated. But I think it's returning better results for all that. Man, but then you might just say I'm, I'm too proud of a person. <laughs> I don't want to replace these guys in Southeast Asia because I don't want the foreign tundra situation to be worse, but I am just going to save them as is. Okay, well, the one thing we can do is at least give them, for crying out loud, improved elevation on those turrets. So, And we'll just slowly, I mean, I guess we can replace probably some of these as well. 
Well, yeah, well, actually, I guess we can replace all of them because they're short range, so they don't really provide as much anyway. And then we can send them right back out. And those are all the birth class. Yeah, I think I will keep them just as foreign tonnage. Basically, very intimidating big guns that against actual big guns, anything else will just fail miserably. Okay, very good. Victory situation, victory point situation. This is exactly when I would want to use my simulator. <laughs> so, it's good. What will I be doing with these? Should I actually rebuild them? Oh, Great Britain. Oh, what about local yards? No, so we want to send them over to the USA. So let's close the Vittles box. Let's, I think I'm going to do this. Let's change over to the USA, improved director, better quality 14 inch guns. Not much left to say that this is exactly what I want. This is how I want it to be. Now we could change any of the turrets stuff because we've already changed the main gun caliber. So if I wanted to, I could take this down to like 12.5. I would have to take this down to 95 to get these turrets not in case mates. All right, let me close it yet again and just restart from scratch. So we go to USA. Total is 80,000. Rebuild cost is, I should just look at the rebuild cost. So 1810, which is 4452. Go like this. Now we're at 82500. And. 83200, 825. Good. So it does it does recognize that. Now we don't have improved director on. Now we do 2700. I think that this is just where we want to leave it. It'll be a decent class ship after this. Still obviously just with three centerline turrets, not amazing. Ah, yeah, increased elevation, that's true. Yeah, we'll just really want to have really good relationships with the United States for a little bit here. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that they would take that, frankly, because I just moved all my ships out. <laughs> yeah, this is where we're going to have some weird dynamics, I think, because we don't have any ships there. Actually, take a look at what happened. Yeah, we just retreated right away. It looks like we didn't lose anything, so just immediately retreated. So minor loss because we didn't kill the ships, I mean, the sink the merchant ships, which was obviously never going to happen anyway, considering we're so heavily outnumbered. And at least we're blockading them. Um, let's auto resolve again. Okay, so the CL Lenoy was sunk by the CL Stetton. Let's take a look. Let's actually analyze this. CL Lenoy. So CL Lenoy was 10 5 inch guns, 5 5 inch gun broadside, 2.5 belt. 5,000 tons, 22. And she was sunk by the who? I, I, God, I honestly don't remember. Well, it was either a Gefion or a Medusa. Let's just take a look. I mean, if it was the Gefion, yeah, she easily should have won. And if it was the Medusa, I mean, she also should have won. Okay, so it seems like a fair result, basically. Not that we're too surprised by that. Oh my God, our monthly balance is not good. Not good at all. Where are the two that we're building? The ones that we're actually building. These two. We're going to haul both of them for now which is still not going to save us very much. But we have two more months. We just need to make it two more months. Well, these six can be held just momentarily. 
And that's gonna, I think, power us through. We probably should just be declining since you know, we really don't have uh, <laughs> the ships out yet. All right, so this is all gonna start, wow, that's this is just the Verth class. We actually have to wait for the 344 to finish before we can do anything. Um, let's unhalt one of them though. The Hatsusi. Yeah, the Japanese usually do fall, fall pretty far behind in terms of gun caliber. We now have tor Torpedo Production 3. We eliminate rate of fire penalty for guns below 8 inches in turrets, which is good. Some periphery stuff going on. Ooh, another one we can auto-resolve. Retires from larger enemy. Okay. Only the Navy can win this war, as we all know. Ooh, another one. Udine, enemy, true, sunk by... Okay, so let's look at the Udine first, because I remember what she is. The Undine. <laughs> I don't know why I was saying Udine. Undine. The Undine, uh, yeah, so it has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six inch gun broadside, three inch belt, very, very heavy armor. These are torpedoes. These are um, gun shields, or shielded gun mounts, not full turrets, but still pretty good. Um, central firing, that's the best our light cruisers can get. And then it sank what? Yeah, it just doesn't work. I, if I don't remember one way, I don't remember the other. Illinois, the Trude, okay, Trude. Or the Truda. And this is absolutely, yeah, no surprise there, that should be sunk. Wow, our, I mean, we don't have the money to do it, but our dock size is actually not that big. Okay, we need to take everything off now. Uh, let's just decline them. <laughs> this is what the auto sim simulator is for, so you don't decline all of them, but that's where I'm back to square run, one. Be a little bit easier to, I mean, and I guess that's still true that there's going to be situations where you want to decline instead of auto sim. Really don't want the war to end until I have <laughs> until I finish these. Yeah, I'll accept cruiser battles. So the Undine, Lalonde escapes. Now let's take a look at this. Undine is twenty six knots, and the Lalonde. 28 knots. Okay, very believable. It's not. It's a good ship, good light cruiser anyway. One, two, three, four, five gun broadside, not six. Lower armor, definitely would want to run away, and seems like it definitely could. So, I like all that. So far, the, you know, Frederick Simulator is also pretty competent. I mean, not surprising. I don't know why that's... I don't mean to say that as if it's surprising. We fully expect that a person who could program something as immensely complicated as Rule the Waves can easily program a one-off simulator. Oh, I forgot to, damn it. Uh, Russia, we hate Russia. Ooh. I don't wanna auto-resolve, but I'm going to. Okay, so the Pathua was sunk by the BC Durflinger. So this kind of goes to show me, I guess I am seeing the light here that I do need to make um, retreating a little bit less effective in my battle sim. And I that's extremely easy for me to do. I know immediately one, at least just one simple thing I can do, which will make retreating still effective, but not as effective as it is. I really gotta do that and just knock that out and immediately call that version 5.05. .05. Although I've been talking about basically adding these options so that people can control how aggressive the simulator is. And I still really want to do that. In fact, I'm 90% done with it. I have a file format set up. I have different starting options. They all load. There's defaults. Like I said, I mean, it's all ready to go. It's just um, because the simulator tournament is on Saturday, I'm kind of focusing on smoothing out some of the rough edges, um, which would never be seen except for the fact that people for this tournament are designing crazy edge case, edge case ships, which is exactly what I was hoping for in a way to refine my simulator, but 
Also, because now there's something big at stake, Rule of Waves 2, free copy, uh, I, I feel there's a duty to make the, the simulator fair. So, what did I want to do before I forget? Let's unpause. Oh, actually, we're doing pretty much okay here. Let's resume this one, because those are almost done. Oops, the lawn escapes. Okay. Didn't see exactly what went on there, but let's also resume this one. We don't want them to spend forever under construction. Improved director, which is funny because we already have it because we're building all our stuff somewhere else. So the French submarines have now sunk a large liner and people are upset at them. It's probably just going to increase their chances of capitulating because of the blockade and all that. Durflinger intercepts French radar. Let's auto resolve again. The lawn was sunk by Durflinger. Okay. Was the Lalonde the one that escaped last time? I don't know, but let's take a look. Just Lalonde is 28, if I remember, and Durflinger is 27. So that seems reasonable that it could escape sometimes, but it also seems reasonable that the Alsace, I mean the Durflinger, well, any Alsace, might destroy it. And these Alsace are what? 1014. They're not upgraded yet. So, yeah, they're regular 14 inch guns. We now have improved director. We don't have the better 14-inch guns. I mean, Germany must have some kind of penalty to increasing the um, to its like naval gun development. Because even though that's pretty much with all my research, look, I have three things on high, and it, this is one of them. What are the other ones? We probably should just start. Ship design is always well. I have 15 already. Put that to medium as well. So we want naval guns. We really, really, really want naval guns. <laughs> Um, what else? What else could we just drop down? Torpedo technology. We're at ten out of that already. Now, nah, torpedo technology is something that can benefit from improvements. Uh, I don't know. We're really far behind in ASW. <laughs> We're actually doing surprisingly well for submarines. Uh, machinery development looks pretty good. I think the max is 19, so we're... Yeah, I mean, actually, we're, we feel a little bit behind for 1920, if I'm honest. Torpedoes do more damage. Good. Not really paying attention, so Munchen intercepts French Raider. Lavoisier escapes. So Munchen versus Lavoisier. Munchen, Munchen. 26... Probably the Vossier is twenty eight knots. Yep, yep. I agree. I agree. Minus four million. We're still doing okay. Okay, there. Finally, the French are feeling the effects of it. I guess the French must be really immune to it. Maybe because they have the Mediterranean as well, and we are not really stopping the Mediterranean traffic, so. We can accept these now that we have all our ships back home. <laughs> They've all come back from USA where they did their refit in only eight months, <laughs> which is quite nice. Yeah, this is probably peace. Yeah, there it is. All right, so what do we want to take? Yep, <gasps> only four, damn you. Hmm. Guess we could take the middle Congo to just take Africa. And Senegal. We could just take these two. Okay. So we're doing a lot better in Africa now. I mean, West Africa. Tensions with the French are still high. I'll probably wrap this episode up here. So what did I, what did we learn in the simulator this time? By the way, please feel free to suggest make any suggestions as far as the simulator goes uh really i want your feedback because i want this to be a tool people want to use and more importantly i do eventually want to ask frederick if he'll include this or you know have an option for auto simulate in the game and you have a chance to basically influence that you know by your comments here okay i see that this is happening now I, to be fair if you don't have comments yet or if you're not really sure if you want to comment yeah, maybe I should be waiting or asking you to, to wait until the next 
uh, improvement comes when the simulator is a little bit more aggressive where retreating is not quite as easy yeah probably so but for now I'm gonna wrap this one up um, again I'm just uh, really happy with everything how this series is really we can go one more war and then call to a close which is perfect timing because basically Rule of Waves 2 will be out in less than a week so we really do need to wrap it up we'll probably do one more episode and that will be on the new simulator for sure um, so we'll see some of that in action and then you know that simulator is probably going to rest on its laurels until I have an opportunity to try to update it for Rule of the Waves 2 and implementing carriers I have some very, very basic ideas, but that's it. So it, it might need um, a pretty significant overhaul. I did not build the infrastructure of it to include carriers. Although, you know, like I said, I have some basic ideas. It'll be fun. Fun times. All right. Anyways, thanks for watching. And until the next episode, take care.